No, I don't think the biblical exodus happened. And frankly, I don't know a single mainstream biblical scholar, scholar of religion, theologian, Egyptologist, historian, anybody in any relevant field working in a mainstream environment who does think that the biblical exodus happened. Scholars who do think the biblical exodus happened do so for confessional reasons, because they are working in confessional environments uh, that effectively require a belief in the biblical exodus because of their doctrinal positions on biblical inerrancy and inspiration. Uh, so they believe this for those reasons, not for evidential reasons. I think it would be very easy for a layperson looking at the situation to conclude that Critical scholars are hostile to the historicity of the Exodus because they don't like miracles very much. And that may be true, but to be frank, uh, miracles are not the biggest obstacle <laughs> to the historicity of the Exodus. You could, for the sake of argument, grant the reality of all the miracles involved in the Exodus, and the biblical Exodus story would be no closer to being historically plausible than it otherwise would. The major obstacles to the historicity of the Exodus are its gigantic scope uh, and the underlying sources, the nature of the underlying sources that attest to the biblical Exodus story. So as far as those sources are concerned, the biblical Exodus story, like so many other stories in the Pentateuch, is edited together out of originally independent and frequently contradictory uh, threads of narrative, originally independent sources. And these sources disagree about how long the Israelites were in Egypt, what exactly they were doing there, what time this was supposed to have taken place, at what period in history, um, what kinds of miracles accompanied their exit from Egypt, uh, the route they took out, how God overcame Pharaoh when Pharaoh came to chase them. All these details in the story, we get multiple contradictory accounts in the biblical uh, narrative. And as a result, the biblical story, the final form of the story we had, is impossible because it cannot possibly account for, no single historical fact could possibly account for these multiple contradictory narratives. It's possible that one underlying tradition could have happened, but the final form of the text is impossible. You, you cannot even provide evidence for it because it's built out of these contradictory pieces. The second major problem is the scope. Both the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers claim that the Exodus involves 600,000 men um, if you factor in women and children, and probably the elderly too, this is going to be upwards of 2 million people, 2 million people left Egypt. Saying 2 million people left Egypt in the second half of the second millennium BCE is like saying 300 plus million people left the United States of America today. Uh, that is to say, it is uh, nearly the entire population of the country, not some oppressed and enslaved minority, but nearly the entire population. This would decimate the country of Egypt. It would become economically unsustainable overnight. It would collapse. Uh, there would be no more Egypt after this for centuries if it, if, if it was ever able to recover at all. Obviously, that's not the archaeological state of affairs that we have. Uh, it would be impossible for two million people to camp out around Kadesh Barnea in, you know, uh, between Egypt and the land of Canaan for 38 some odd years, like the biblical account tells us, without some archaeological evidence showing up. Um, it would be impossible, or it just wouldn't make any sense, for two million plus people to enter into the land of Canaan. We have no archaeological evidence of a sudden influx of two million plus people coming into the land of Canaan at any of the times that the Exodus was supposed to have happened. If the Israelites had 600,000 fighting men with them, the stories in Joshua wouldn't make any sense at all, because the entire population of the land of Canaan at this time was about 600,000 people. So you would have one soldier for every man, woman, and child in the region. You would wash over the country like a flood. You wouldn't be talking about these these battles between, you know, a few thousand soldiers here and there. That, that, that would be ridiculous. You would send all 600,000 into the country and they would conquer every single city in it virtually uncontested, right? You wouldn't need miracles. You wouldn't need God to stop the sun in the sky or to rain down gigantic hailstones or to throw their armies into disarray. That would all be unnecessary. You could just send them over the next hill with sticks and stones and they would be able to beat you know, any army uh, that, that stood against them because by, by sheer size alone. So the scale is archaeologically and narratively uh, ridiculous as far as the actual evidence that we have. And this is why, if you pay close attention, if you watch videos from apologists on TikTok or YouTube or something like that who are trying to provide evidence for the Exodus, 
it is never for the biblical exodus as it's actually narrated. It's always for some overly interpreted, very selective, reconstructed version of the exodus where they have already gone through and they have gotten rid of all the contradictions. They've picked a date and a time for this to have happened at. They've put forward a, a much smaller scope. So it's not 600,000 people. It's, it's a much smaller scope. After all this reconstruction and interpretation, then they'll say, well, I have some evidence for this modified version of the Exodus. And did a modified version of the Exodus happen? I, I don't know. But did the biblical Exodus happen? No. That's, it's literally impossible 